Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I yield myself such time as I may consume. Gentlemen's recognized for such time. Mr. Chairman, I rise in support of H.R. 2666. This is the No Rate Regulation of Broadband Internet Access Act. From the first indication that the Federal Communications Commission intended to reclassify broadband internet access service as a Title II service subject to utility, imagine that utility regulation, the Subcommittee on Communications and Technology has made it a priority to ensure that the FCC bureaucracy never has the authority to actually get in and then micromanage and regulate rates. The Internet is a model of innovation, flourishing under decades of light touch or no touch regulation. That's how it's flourished, Mr. Chairman. In recent years, as the FCC has repeatedly attempted to regulate the management of Internet traffic, the potential reach of those regulations has grown, prompting concerns that the FCC would retreat to the world of rate regulation that typified the monopoly telephone era. Unfortunately, these fears proved well-founded when the FCC announced in early 2015, Mr. Chairman, that it would reclassify the Internet as a utility-style service as part of the newest net neutrality rules, rules that are currently being challenged in the courts, I might add. I'd like to begin by addressing one of the most common attacks against this legislation, Mr. Chairman, that we are attempting to, quote-unquote, gut the FCC's authority to implement net neutrality rules. That simply is not the case. We are supportive of clear, bright line rules of the road for ISPs and the way they treat Internet traffic. We're for that. In fact, last year I released a discussion draft bill along with Chairman Upton and Senator Thune that would, re would codify those very rules. What we don't support is the use of outdated, ill-suited regulations to achieve those goals. This bill isn't intended to touch the net neutrality rules. Uh, going and, in, in fact, uh, amendment I, uh, I offered up in committee markup goes so far as to make an explicit exemption to ensure that the bill would not impact the FCC's work to ban paid prioritization. What this bill does is prohibit the FCC from regulating the amount charged to a consumer by an ISP for the provision of a broadband service, a fact made clear by our definitions. There's another objection, Mr. Chairman, we've heard repeatedly, and that was that the FCC had chosen to forbear from several of the provisions in Title II and that the chairman of the FCC had promised not to regulate rates anyway, so this bill was really unnecessary. Again, this is simply not the case. The FCC did forbear from various sections of Title II, but the authority to regulate rates through enforcement was and is still very much on the table. In addition, while Chairman Wheeler did promise before our subcommittee and multiple other committees of the Congress that he would not regulate rates, there was nothing to bind him or his successors to that commitment. The need for the certainty of a statutory ban on rate regulation became even clearer just a few weeks ago when the bill's sponsor, Representative Kinzinger, actually asked the chairman of the FCC, Chairman Wheeler, whether he believed the FCC should have the authority to regulate rates. Chairman Wheeler's response? Yes, sir, quote, unquote. Well, given the philosophy of the chairman himself, it is clearly more pressing than ever that this bill becomes law. The FCC cannot and should not be able to regulate the rates charged by ISPs to their customers. This sort of regulatory overhang clouds the decision-making of providers and dissuades them from offering innovative, pro-consumer pricing plans and service offerings, lest the Commission come back after the fact and penalize them. Take T-Mobile's binge on service as a prime example. Consumers are able to access video offered by any participant in the program without the data counting toward their monthly usage limits or charges. Edge providers win because their content is viewed more often. The service provider wins because they actually attract more customers. It's called the marketplace. It's innovation in the marketplace, responding to what consumers want. Most importantly, consumers win because they're able to access the desired content with no cost or penalty. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Now, I'm not here to advocate for one company over another, but this is called innovation in the marketplace. This is what entrepreneurship is all about. But unfortunately, under the opaque rules of the FCC, T-Mobile, T-Mobile had no way of knowing whether this sort of binge-on pricing scheme would violate the Commission's rules. 
They didn't know. And while T-Mobile has taken this risk, many providers may now choose not to do so, ultimately de depriving customers of choices they otherwise would have. You see, everybody's a little afraid that does this chairman or the next chairman come back after the fact and say, well, you know, that's really not something we think's too dandy to do. So we're going to penalize you. It's called after the fact regulation. So as an unfortunate corollary to this chapter in Internet history, the same kind of flip-flop we're concerned we will see on rate regulation is exactly what we've seen with respect to Ben John. You see, Chairman Wheeler was, quote, unquote, okay with it until he decided maybe not. As a former business owner myself, I can tell you that you can't make business decisions based on a hope and a prayer of your regulator. I was actually regulated by the FCC. I knew the rules. I followed them. They were clear. They were bright line. In an incredibly innovative marketplace, which the Internet thrives in, can you imagine having the lack of clarity and the ability to go back after the fact and, in effect, rate regulate? This will stifle competition, innovation, and consumer choice. Finally, I'd like to address changes, or excuse me, charges that this bill would leave customers helpless to overcharged or worse by ISPs. We would all share that concern. We don't want that. And this bill provides protection. The notion that the FCC, an agency that didn't have authority over Internet service providers' rates until last year, until last year, is the only line of defense between customers and fraud is frankly silly. It's a silly claim. Customers have gotten along just fine without the aid of the FCC regulating rates. And this notion that the FCC is the only cop on the beat for consumers would come as a surprise, a real surprise to many states, attorneys general, and consumer advocates across the nation. All those protections, fraud, abuse, still prevail out there. This bill is a carefully tailored piece of legislation that's targeted just one thing. One thing, Mr. Chairman, that's unnecessary bureaucratic, Washington-based rate regulation. We used the most narrow definition, inserted rules of construction, and made specific exemptions to the prohibition, all in an attempt to address the concerns that were raised by the witnesses in our hearings that we held, Mr. Chairman, members at Markup and others who participated in the process. We listened to all of those voices say, how do we make this right? How do we make it narrow? How do we get at just the issue here of a bureaucracy that wants to expand and grow and micromanage and rate regulate? We sought to prevent unintended consequences, unlike the FCC, who crafted their rules to have the broadest and furthest reaching scope. Imagine that, Mr. Chairman, from a bureaucracy that writes rules, that they would write rules that are broadly written so they have more power for themselves. In fact, many of the changes we made to the bill at full committee markup were inspired by an amendment offered by Representative Matt Suey of California. Drawing on her suggested changes, we amended the bill to be a more targeted draft. We also considered amendments by multiple other members of Congress, but felt that they would not have resulted in the kind of prohibition that this situation narrowly calls for, one that clearly prohibits all flavors of rate making, not just before the fact tariffing, where they say you can charge $7, that's it. That would be tariffing before the fact. But also after the fact regulation, where they come back, Mr. Chairman, and say, oh, by the way, whatever you are charging, we've now kind of thought about that, and we think it was too much or too little or whatever. Well, I'm disappointed that so many of my colleagues across the aisle cannot support this bill. It wasn't for lack of trying. It wasn't for a lack of a hearings process or taking many of their suggestions to heart and modifying our underlying text. I nonetheless, though, strongly believe that this legislation is an essential step in maintaining the robust and vibrant Internet ecosystem that drives our economy, powers innovations, prompts and promotes new jobs and investment like no other service. The last thing we want to throw on there is the cold water of Washington bureaucracy after the fact regulation that will stifle competition and innovation that has so benefited consumers in this great internet economy in which we find ourselves. And with that, Mr. Spe Mr. Chairman, I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from Oregon reserves the balance of his time. The uh, gentleman